Is our media any different, any better, or is it just a propaganda art uh, arm that is promoting the party line? Let me show you what happened with Janet Napolitano. Um, this woman is uh, amazing. Here she is admitting that terrorists, yes, terrorists, are coming across the border, but uh, only once in a while. Watch. So my question is, is there any credible evidence that these reports are accurate and that terrorists are, in fact, crossing our southern border with the intent to do harm to the American people? W with respect, there have been, uh, and the Bob CR uh, matter would be one I would refer to that's currently in, uh, being adjudicated in the criminal courts from time to time. Uh, and we are constantly working against different and evolving threats uh, involving uh, various terrorist groups uh, and various ways they may seek to enter the country. What I can tell you, however, is that the, that the southern border, uh, the U.S.-Mexico border, uh, is heavily, heavily staffed at heavily. record amounts of manpower, material, infrastructure, and the like. Uh, and we are co constantly making sure we're doing all we can to make that border as safe as possible. Yeah. Somebody's eating all my brain candy. Mm. It makes me sad, but at least I know that our border is completely safe. They're doing all kinds of stuff. If there's any problem, it's the Canadian border. Mm -hmm. Now, if you remember right, we were told that the uh, Department of Homeland Security is there to keep us safe from what? From another 9-11, right? That's why we had to have it, have to have it right now. Have to have it. A lot of people are like, no, I don't think we should have this. It uh, sounds like a really bad, spooky department. Nope, nope, have to have it, otherwise we're going to have terrorists all over our country. Now they come out and say, yeah, they're coming across the border, but only from time to time. Oh, so I feel totally safe. I mean, from time to time. There's no follow-up from the press. No follow-up when the press says, you know, hey, uh, what about the border? And the president comes out and gives a speech, border fence, now it's 5% complete. Well, basically the border fence is done. Really? Then they wanted a fence. Well, the fence is... The fence is now basically complete. No, it's 5%. It's no one seemed to mind when the Justice Department abruptly decided to dismiss the voter intimidation case against the Black Panthers, even though it was all set up for a conviction. It was all there. The government just dropped the case, remember? Oh, no, nothing funny was going on. Nobody followed up, even though new information is now out that shows political uh, appointees within the DOJ conferred about the case in the days before the dismissal, exactly as we suspected when we reported on this at Fox. The White House denied any of this stuff happening. But it did. We now know it did. Is the media reporting on it? The media mocked Sarah Palin for her death panel's remark. They were all over me when I suggested that government health care would eventually lead to rationing of medicine. It had to. CNS today claims that 16 states have now set a limit on the number of prescription drugs they're going to cover for Medicaid patients. So in other words, they're, they're, they're rationing. On the flip side, what happens when you oppose the party line? Oh, well, here comes the 70,000 censors. Mitt Romney was absolutely mauled for the um, uh, supposed gaffe. The media just took him like they were the polar bear over there, just mauled him to death. He's overseas in the U.K. He made the oh-so-horrible statement that he found their preparations were a bit disconcerting. The press went into full Romney bash mode. Oh, he's ruined our relationship with, the, with England. Really? Watch. He came here to look presidential, to remind voters of his own Olympics resume. Instead, delivering what some call an Olympic-sized gaffe. The British papers, Mitt Romney's disastrous day. One writer arguing his charm offensive, instead mildly offensive. The lead story on the news. Mark, if he's here to make uh, friends, he's got a funny way of showing it. Exactly. And just overnight, when Britain's minister for the Olympics was asked whether Romney would help carry the torch at tonight's opening ceremonies. <laughs> probably, probably was certainly not after today. A day in which the mayor of London took on Romney in front of 60,000 people in Hyde Park. There's a guy called Mitt Romney who wants to know whether, whether we're ready. He wants to know whether we're ready. Are we ready?
Yes, oh, and they are. Now that the games have started, Mitt Romney's concerns are beginning to look a little, little accurate. The stadium seats are packed. I mean, so many people are... Okay, well, don't look at that picture. Okay, I mean, there's, there's teachers and, and kids out of school and, and military people that are being brought in to fill the gaping holes in the crowd. But Okay, well, you got that picture, too, but... So far, no apologies have been offered to Romney. They're just going to leave America with the impression that he botched our relationship with the U.K., an impression the media failed to convey when Obama shipped back the bust of Winston Churchill and gave the Queen an iPod and a DVD player that doesn't even work. Hmm. But what would you expect from the media over here or over there, especially over there when you just had the opening ceremonies of full-fledged national health services? full-fledged propaganda spelling out NHS. I mean, we have a president and a media, and it's globally, that's headed towards lies, deception, and control. Terrorists penetrating the border? Who cares? But watch out for those radical Tea Partiers causing civil unrest soon. Now let's look where you're headed. You see, there are two kinds of Americans. There's uh, one type, we've seen it over and over and over again, the violent flash mobs willing to cr commit all kinds of crimes just to get a pair of free jeans or whatever, fight on camera just for a shot of YouTube fame. Over and over and over again, we've seen these crazy, crazy things. But then there's the other American. We saw them at the Restoring Love uh, event this last weekend. People with a genuine love for their fellow man and their country. Just yesterday morning, the first of 11 food trucks, I'm sorry, 14 food trucks, reached its destination. Today, uh, one hit Brooklyn. There's another one that's going to hit the Navajo Indian Reservation uh, later on today. This is unprompted. This is without any kind of crisis. This is in the middle of the summer. They can't get people to do this during uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas. This was in the summer. Tell me any time in the history uh, with a Republican or a Democrat where they've gotten people together and they've donated something like this to, to 11 different cities, one of them being the, the Navajo Nation. Navajos didn't ask us. We asked them. There is a generation of people who get it. Both parties are the problem, and we need a change in principle, not just the party that the office holds. Ted Cruz is going to win today in Texas, I think big. Politico wrote that if he does win, it will send shockwaves. And that despite being outspent more than three to one and being the GOP party establishment, he's never run for office. He's, uh, he's been tasked with penetrating the Lone Star State's 20 media markets with virtually zero name recognition. Cruz is a well-positioned... Um, candidate to upset Lieutenant Governor David Dewhurst. This will be another impressive string of Tea Party victories. America, you've already won. Progressives have been leading us astray for decades, and you have successfully begun the long process of turning the Titanic around. And the more it falls apart, the more the media will spin tales about how this president shot seven holes in one during his last round, how he got a little angry and caused the oceans to recede. How he's never gone poopy in the potty. How a little sparrow told him how he needed another stimulus package. And a double rainbow appeared suddenly when the president announced Obamacare. But here's the thing. It doesn't matter how many fairy tales they spin. It always falls apart in the end. Always. Um, a listener just uh, sent this to me. And I just think this is... Um, this is amazing. This is um, from the Chicago Daily Tribune, the world's greatest newspaper, December 30th, 1937. This is the time when um, people thought that we were going to become a dictatorship. It felt very much like this because the country was headed in exactly the same way and doing the same things. But on this, you'll see Roosevelt Bill Bears plan to boss businesses. He was asking, he was asking people to, um, if you wanted to, if you wanted to have a business in the United States, 
You had to have a federal license to start a business. People said, mm, I don't think so, Franklin. But that's where we were headed. You had to, he was afraid that you were trying to undercut things. You were trying to do things that, you know, others can't. All of it was designed to help the giant corporations, all of it. That's who the Democrats were and really always have been. Progressives get into bed with giant corporations that don't mind that big government control. The Republicans do it as well, but they're all progressives. Washington said, let us raise a standard to which the, eyes, the wise and the honest can repair. The rest is in the hands of God. That's us. We are the wise and the honest, or we're trying to be. I saw you last week. I know who you are. You're pretty impressive. You are going to be the people that change the course of this uh, country. But, just in case, keep a journal. Keep a journal. The truth is not being reported. You need to make sure you write down everything that you know and what's really going on in your head. Whether it becomes famous or not, I don't know, but I'll bet you one or two people that do this and really focus on what's happening in the world. I have a feeling your, your children or your grandchildren will end up being very, very rich if you keep that journal. The truth has to be recorded, and it's recorded so few places today.